Sure. Okay, everyone. Uh, good morning. I am Prasanna Kalevar. I'm going to talk about Glastra as a block store. This is all a kid, actually. So I need more inputs from you to make it better. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, uh, block storage architecture and some of the terminologies we use, like LAO, TCMU, and what is TCMU enough? What is target CLA and etc. I'll take you through the demo of how the block store works with the basic uh, Glastra and block store works. And then we'll uh, uh, go into details of the snapshots uh, that we are leveraging here. And I, I'll take you to the performance numbers, what is the <coughs> improvement in the performance when compared to the fuse and all. And um, uh, this, the, the, the right side story is about integration into the containers, uh, how we use persistent store in the containers. And I'll walk through the demo uh, using Kubernetes. And we'll, uh, we'll go through some of the problems that we are seeing it now, right? uh, locking how we are handling it now, and uh, we'll describe about what's the next story. Uh, it's like we have a set of nodes. Think it of like we have a set of nodes. We made it into a cluster volume, and we created a file in it. And uh, I, SCSI is a small computer system interface where uh, it helps you in. It's a set of uh, standards, uh, helps in uh, talking to the peripheral devices uh, for transferring data. iSCSI is uh, uh, SCSI or internet. Uh, basically, it's built on a client and server module. Uh, it exposes a local storage bus as a storage, and uh, the client is going to connect to it, and they exchange a set of SCSI commands to interact and do the data transfers. Uh, well, LAO is the uh, target system uh, built in Linux. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a traditional SCSI target system, and uh, it, it has got some backends uh, which which defines the way how it talks to the underlying storage. So uh, the backend stores are like a backend to the LAO, and by, uh, by, by configuring LAO core uh, using the target CLI, which is like a shell, or it's like a configuration shell kind of thing, which, uh, which allows you to configure LAO to talk to a appropriate module. You see the TCMU, uh, TCMU is a, TCM, TCM is another name of, uh, uh, LIO, TCMU is a user space module for it, which allows uh, a user space file to be exposed as a block store or uh, exposed like a target. So basically, uh, the traditional LIO core allows the kernel based files or kernel based, so uh, the file level is like you expose a file uh, as, a, as, a, as a target device, uh, which is in the kernel space and all. Uh, the uh, so uh, PC PSCSI is like a dev SDA that, that you expose it as a target device and RAM disk is like uh, uh, RAM, RAM disk mapped in to, to to expose it as a target device. So the TCM user allows you to uh, basically expose a user user space file as a target device. So uh, it uses a UIO subsystem, which uh, please let me know if I'm going uh, faster a bit faster. You are. Um, okay, thank you. Thanks for that. So I, I'm more concerned with the time. So, uh, so, uh, so basically, it uses the UIO subsystem. The UIO subsystem is uh, helps in developing the user space device drivers. So it's like any subsystem that need to talk with TCMU user has to basically 
uh, wait for the UAO devices or it need to configure or discover the UAO devices here um, and it need to wait for the events that's happening from the kernel side and it need to handle the uh, uh, basically the uh, bufferings, kernel bufferings. <coughs> so I, I'll explain the complete story when you have the complete architecture here. Uh, as of now, the TCMU runner has two handlers, uh, with which like uh, a QCOW2 handler and a GLFS handler, which can talk to the cluster file here. So if, if you build up the complete story here, an iSCSI initiator is sitting. This is like a think it is like, like a client, which talks to the uh, iSCSI. It's like it shares a set of commands that goes into the LAO, and the LAO routes it up to one of the backends. Let's say in our case, it's TCMU user which exposes some of the UIO devices, uh, just think it of like dev fuse or something, like dev UIO zero, and uh, the, uh, the service which is running in the user space will take care of it and expose this device through, uh, uh, so TCMU runner can talk to cluster, uh, cluster volume through GLFS. So it has this interface. So, well, uh, so this is all the story. When when it talks to it, when it reaches to it, uh, I mean to say that when it discovers the device, you can see it like a dev SDA is arrived in the uh, you know client side of it. So that that's how I say it. It's a uh, we we work out the solution to arrive at a block story. So I, I'll take you through the demo so that it will be more clear. So I have three nodes here. So the setup is like simple. I have a three nodes of cluster volume, uh, cluster nodes, which basically combines to have a volume. Try to create a file in it, and from the client side, we uh, try to discover this as a target device. There, there, uh, there. How the uh, you know, flow goes. So I'm taking the node one here. Try to do some cluster setup. Let's see the. Uh, let's start the cluster D here in all the three nodes. So I'm doing the PR probing. I'm trying to create the uh, replica, replica 3 volume here. And let's start the volume. It's, it's a simple replica 3 volume uh, with default settings. So I just mounted the device. And I have created a big file, app store image, which is of, let's say, 8 GB. And that's all. Now I try to expose this file in the cluster volume as a target device. How I'm going to use is using the target CLI. I use the target CLI to configure LIO core uh, such that it uses the TCMU user, which in turn uses the TCMU runner, which is running in the user space, which talk to the file in a cluster volume through uh, GLFS. So we need TCMU runner, which is a user space service, and target CLI, which is like a shell to configure LAO asset. I'm just starting the TCMU runner. So I'm creating a image, uh, uh, image that is App Store image. I'm doing it as like GLFS lang. I'm exporting it like create the image. Uh, it, it just sees that whether the image is already there in the cluster volume, and it just tries to configure it. Okay. The, the backend is created. So th this is like a target. Target is like uh, endpoint. So think it of like initiator is the client side endpoint and the target is the server side endpoint. So here I'm trying to expose a LAN. So basically, uh, the initiator cannot directly talk to the LAO core. Uh, what LAO core e does is LAO core exposes a LAN so that the initiator negotiates with the uh, target and it tries to establish the connection with the LAN. As a result, we have the iSCSI connection established. So we created the LAN. So I tried to set the uh, uh, initiator. So I'm just putting the, some ACLs here so that I know who is my initiator. And I, 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 I try to you know, put some permissions to him so that he tries to uh, able to log into it. 
So I just create an uh, ACL for it and I try to set the user ID and password for authentication. I am uh, using CHAP uh, authentication module here. So I just some, uh, set the user ID as block store and password as block store and the created target is uh, 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 created initiator uh, is block store. I mean, this, this is the go, uh, this is the address that we are going to use at the uh, initiator side of it. So, I say that we we have done with it. What we have done is we try to uh, expose the file in a cluster volume as a target device. So, let's see how, whether it is it has done perfectly or not. So, we have to go into etc target save config. Here we see that. Sorry. Here here we see that okay uh, the file. Uh, AppStore.image is configured, and we have the size of 8 GB that we have created there, and we have a, uh, we have the WWN. WWN is the worldwide number, which is very unique for a particular device. So that's all from the uh, server side of it. So what we have done, uh, we have created a cluster volume, and we have created a file in it. We expose that file as a LUN. That's all we have done, and from the initiator side. This is the fourth machine. So I <coughs> I try to uh, configure the initiator name. So we have to define the same name that we have used over there. So I change it to block store, which is what we have created. So this is the, so that is IQN is the iSCSI qualified name followed by date. It has, it has uh, you know, uh, addressing stuff, it, it, it has got some syntax to put. Uh, this is the final uh, name that we de defined for the uh, given authenticator. And in the etc iSCSI, iSCSI, iSCSI.conf, I just uncomment the chap module because I'm going to use it. And basically it tries to uh, set the username and password that we have already created for it. Okay, I have uncommented username and password, and if you see, I've, I've uncommented the uh, authentication module. So I change it to block store, and same with the password. Save, restart the iSCSID, and tries to uh, you know, log into that machine. So we have the LUN exported there. Let's log into that from the client side. We log into that so that the device will be arrived at here, like let's say a dev SD or whatever, and we try to put our data in it. So LSBLK, it's like list of block devices here. I don't see anything SDA or something here. Uh, checking for so we need iSCSI admin uh, I, uh, admin utility for you know discovering the. LUNs that we have exported. So I say, this is my uh, you know path or uh, uh, where 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 my LUN uh, exists, and the connection is established. Now let's list the block devices here. Yeah, I see SDA here because sorry, the the connection is successful. Now the iSCSI connection is established. I'll show you that dev uh, the dev SDA is what we are looking for, and it's it's from the cluster volume or not. So we see that uh, it's from GLFS block store, which is the volume name there, and from the node one and the image, the, the, the file which is exported as a target is app store image here, the vendor specific. So nothing great, I'll, I'll try to format that device to some format, let's say XFS, and uh, let's mount it. Uh, we see it has mounted the, the same 8 GB file and I'll try to write something so that I, I say that it's writable. Okay, that's all from This is a basic uh, block store. Let's go back.
now let's see how we achieve the block snapshot we have certain uh, uh, approaches to take here uh, so we have this tcm runner currently have the two handlers which is qcov2 and glfs but glfs knows how to talk to a raw device which is exported from the cluster volume uh, through the jf api calls and we have this qcov2 handler which can talk to a local device and uh, the uh, exported if, if it tries to create a qcov2 file in a cluster volume and tries to export it uh, so it cannot discover that because it does not ha uh, identify the headers of the qcov2 so one way of uh, taking this uh, uh, snapshot through it is like modify the existing qcov2 handler to hold the glfs calls from it so instead of the normal sys calls read write and all we'll have glfs read glfs write and and also thus we we uh, now now uh, the QCO2 handler knows how to deal with the uh, cluster volume files. And the other approach is like reflinks based snapshots. Uh, so the reflinks are not into the production, and uh, it's like if you take the reflink based, reflink based snapshots, anyway, we are using this uh, sharding feature there. We need to manage, we need to take the reflinks of the individual files there, and we need to manage it from our own. And the another approach here is a uh, QMU translator from the cluster. Uh, we'll talk about it in uh, detail. So this is a QCOV2 uh, file, how it looks like. So the, the header has all the magic version and offsets to the uh, ref counts and L1 tables uh, uh, and uh, the snapshot uh, headers and everything. So the ref count table is the one which, uh, which, holds the, which holds the, you know, addresses to the uh, blocks there. And ref count block is for uh, having the ref numbers of each block, uh, who uses it. I, I, if you take the snapshot on it and uh, it has a ref count of two, basically. The, the, so the QCOV2 has a concept of cluster, uh, cluster bits. It, so one block is like a simple cluster. So it maintains uh, a ref count there. So L1 table is thinking of like a uh, primary page tables, which has interns like pointers to the L2. And uh, we have the data here, data, uh, data clusters. Let's say it's occupied. And when we take the snapshot, uh, the snapshot header is created, which holds the pointers to the L1, L2, name of the snapshot, and uh, uh, what um, uh, the time when the snapshot is created, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, 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 so uh, we have spoken about if if we create a QCO2 file in a cluster volume, why it's uh, the TCM runner is unable to export it as a target because it does not under, understand the headers. So the QMU block X later there does a good job. It exposes uh, out of cluster. It shows a QCO2 file as a raw file. Uh, uh, so I with the help of QCO2 block X later, which has most of the code of uh, QMU, uh, QMU QCO2 drivers. So it takes, so we have all that in our source code and it takes the help of it and tries to expose it as a raw device. So, so this is from the cluster perspective. So the TCM runner now can, through the GLFS, can talk to uh, the raw device because it knows how to talk to a raw device. So which in turn talks to the LAO TCM runner, uh, negotiating with it, we get a <coughs> block device here. So this is how. So now the uh, uh, with Q, uh, uh, QMU block X later we do set X adder, uh, with set X adder and get X adder with, we can try, uh, take the advantage of them and try to create the snapshots. So when we see the performance numbers, uh, so this is the, the baseline is a fuse and the target is the TCM runner exported block device in the client. So the results are amazing. So if you see the right, uh, you can see the more uh, uh, here. So I'll sh share the slides and you can you can go through them. And it's like uh, the right, uh, the, the read performance here is this is the basically the uh, taken from the block side of it, and this is the fuse. And the right performance, it's like this is a block again, and this is a fuse on on the fuse. So I have measured it with the IO zone with one gigs of uh, block size, and uh, uh, this is it. I think you should probably clarify that uh, the. The fuse one is uh, a file stored and it is yes. exported as a file, and whereas this one is with the GLFS. Yes. yes. So it's it's like fuse. Uh, the fuse performance here is like we we try to create. So uh, if you remember this. So if you remember this, there, there is a file over here which can talk to a local uh, file in a cluster volume. So we mounted in the uh, file. Now, uh, so we mounted the cluster volume uh, using fuse. We created a file and we exported that file using FAO as a block store and we took the performance. 
and uh, the second one is the uh, TCMU runner, uh, which uses a, a GF API engine. So what's so other part of the story is the containerized. So what is our goal is uh, the, the, we we all know the state of uh, the persistent sorry, the containers are stateless and. Uh, uh, they cannot store the state of the applications that they are running. So if you run some application in the container, if you want to store the state of their applications or want to store something else from the application results, uh, computation results, we need the persistent stored there. So we are using the uh, solution proposed um, uh, for the containerized story. So I'm sorry, I need another five minutes. Okay. I don't say back. It's okay. Uh, so, um, so you're saying Sham. <coughs> so you're talking about uh, QCOV to base snapshots and stuff like that, right? So uh, once you take a snapshot, where does the block copy happen and there's a block change? So we, we have to freeze it, uh, freeze the IO uh, before we take the snapshot. Right. After you take a snapshot, where does the block copy happen? The block copy, so it, it depends on where uh, you t you take the snapshot and your state, what the application sees is the uh, snapshot side of it. So your data data of the, so when when we take the snapshot in the QCOW2, see uh, initially the L1 table uh, will be copied and then when you do a, when, when it comes to the copyright, L2 tables will be copied and then from then it will be having maintaining the separate data blocks to it. So the data blocks will be uh, separate for it. But they will be on that file. Yeah. It's the same So it's not it's not the external snapshots, it's an internal snapshot. Okay. If a block changes partially, you need to preserve the old block. Yeah. What I mean so so you read the old block, change the data and write the new block. Yeah, that, that's what the came up. That, that, that's a uh, it will be taken care of the QMU uh Q out to format. That happens from the client side. It doesn't happen on the break. <laughs> Yeah. From a cluster perspective. Okay. Yeah, from a from a KMU block X later, that happens. I mean, you tax the server, so it happens nice as you target, I agree. But from a cluster perspective, it happens from the cluster client. Okay. Yeah. Is it, is it true? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I need to make it really fast now. I mean, gave a signal there. So, <laughs> so, uh, so how we are leveraging this storage in the Kubernetes? So, Kubernetes has like something called master and the other nodes. So, these are like a master and the nodes. So the Kubernetes master initiates or spawns the pods. Like pods are like a set of containers uh, defined for an application or defined for a use case. So they spawn. Uh, so we we have in the story we have the complete six nodes, three nodes from the cluster cluster which makes the replicate three volume, and three nodes for the Kubernetes. The one node will be the node six will be let's say node one, node two, node three as the cluster volume, uh, and uh, node. Four, node five are the clients of Kubernetes, and node six is the master of it. So it spawns some pods or some containers in this uh, node four and node node six, and it needs the persistent storage. So that that's where we come in and we we uh, provide the solution uh, uh, for for the persistent store use case. So I'll go through the demo so that will it will be clear. I'm sure. Okay, the plan is like, we have six nodes, I said, three from the cluster side and three from the client side. So we create a cluster replica three volume there using node one, node two, node three. And we define iSCSI target using the same nodes, node one, node two, node three. And we expose LUNs from there. Use node five and node, uh, node four and node five as an iSCSI initiators by logging into the SCSI target. Set up Kubernetes clusters using node 5, node 6, node 6, uh, as, as I said. And uh, from node 6, we try to create the parts and examine that iSCSI target devices as mounted inside the parts. So these are from the Kubernetes side. So we already have a cluster volume, and we have the file in it. So I, ha I already have the Kubernetes set up here. So I say list of nodes. So the two nodes are ready for me. I say get pods, nothing is there. Get PVC, nothing is there. Get PVC, nothing is there. 
So in the node, uh, in the Kubernetes node, I'll try to, you know, uh, uh, define our initiator parameters. So I defined it as like Kubernetes GBS one, and same the disabling chat module and for the authentication system, and that's all. I don't log in here. So this is for the multi multi pathing. So for the high availability. So since I was exposing, so previously I have exposed the LUN through using one node of the cluster. This time I am going to expose the LUNs from three nodes of the cluster. So as a result, in the uh, Kubernetes side, we see we three we see three devices, multi paths for high availability. So I, I have not logged into the session yet. So I'm trying to do that from the second node as well. Authentications, and uh, from the Kubernetes master. So I try to create a persistent volume here first. So I say that this is a I, I need an eight GB space for it. This is my target portal, and this is my iSCSI device name, uh, and it has an XFS file system on it. I say create PV. So it says the PV is created. So it says the status is available. Now this is the PVC, which is the persistent volume game. So you already have a persistent volume there. Now the uh, user comes in and says, oh, this is my persistent volume claim and I from, from the created persistent volume and I need some space of it. I say create a PVC for me. See, we have created the PVC here and it's bound. That means uh, the, 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 the user has already got the space of it. And now I try to create the volume, create the pod, sorry. So this is my pod basically, which I say that, oh, okay, uh, try to uh, mount me, uh, the persistent volume that I got at this space and use the persistent volume claim. Created it. I say get nodes, uh, sorry, get pods. The container is in creation state. <coughs> you cannot see this, sorry. So now the container is running, uh, the pod is running. I'm getting into the container or the pod. <coughs> there I see if the persistent volume is already created or not. There I go, I see slash MNT cluster store which is of 8 GB and I see the files which I have created before exist here. So, so read write once is like locking mechanism for the, uh, so we have a set of three nodes and uh, let's say we have one node, we have exported a LUN from one of the node and uh, Give me two minutes, please. I'll complete this. So we have exported a LUN uh, basically from one of the nodes, and we try to initiate the connection in the client side. What if another user or the another initiator tries to connect to the same LUN because he has also has the credentials? How do we lock? Uh, so since the file system is XFS on the target side, how do we manage the uh, data there? So we 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 were this is all like theory. We haven't went through how it works and all. So we are using persistent reservation groups here. It's like uh, for for the uh, for any I/O fencing, uh, this is a you know this is the best solution that we can avoid the split brains of data. And uh, so this is basically implemented in the LIO target engine, uh, the persistent reservation groups, uh, the logical mechanism for controlling the access to the uh, uh, to all the targets. So how they work is like they have these comments. They, so, so the client registers to a particular, uh, you know, initiator there. Yeah. I appreciate what you're doing, but I think it's going way too okay. long, and I think we need to start stopping. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we can continue as above. Sure. Thank you. Because if not, it's going to come into other ones. Believe it. It's already delayed. 
Okay. We've already kind of done it right Okay. I'm so sorry. Okay, cool. We need to wrap up. Okay. Hey, thank you. <laughs> we can discuss more in the video. Oh, and the reason that I'm pushing is because lunch can't be moved. That's okay. Um, so, you know, lunch happens when it's